So with the demise of um, Forefront TMG, people have been looking for a cheap and easy reverse proxy option. Um, there is a plugin available for IIS called Application Request Routing, or ARR, that's um, quite easy to configure and is fully supported for Link and obviously works as a general HTTP or HTTPS reverse proxy. So we're going to run through how to configure that. Um, before we do it, let's have a quick look at our environment that we're using to actually configure it. So I've got a, a server machine here that's acting as a reverse proxy. If we pop into your net, into the networking, what you'll see is that it's got two uh, network cards, an internal one and an external. Okay, so the internal network card, if we have a quick look here, is on our 192 address. Um, the external is on 10.1.1.1, so you can see the two networks there. So we have two websites called intweb1.contoso.local, uh, which is on 192.168.1.100, and I have another one called intweb2.contoso.local, which is housed on 192.168.1.101. So we have two websites on two different hosts. If I connect to them from Internet Explorer, they're set up for SSL, so intweb1.contoso.local. There you go, you'll see that it's website one. If I connect to um, the second one, of course it just says website two. So they're the two websites we're gonna try and reverse proxy out. Okay, so in order to demonstrate the reverse proxy, I also have a Windows 7 client set up. So if we quickly switch across to that, there we go. Uh, and what you'll see on this machine is it has an external address of 101150. Um, so this will access from the external adapter of the uh, reverse proxy. So let's go through them. We'll get ARR installed and I'll show you how to configure the proxy rules. So let's look at getting application request routing installed. It's very straightforward and very quick. Um, it's done from a web page, which I've already opened up here. Um, you can get the link off my blog or you can see it at the top or just search for it. It's very easy to find. You'll see that there's an option there to install this extension. So uh, let's install that and we'll just let it run. Okay, so hit the install button. to run um, the application piece that downloads. Just let it run. I'll come up with a web platform installer, so again we need to let that run. We're, we're now ready to actually download and install the, uh, the platform. So down the bottom there you've got an install button, so hit that. Um, you can just accept this and it should actually download all the components for you. And then we'll just let that run. Finished. So now we're all ready to go and actually configure um, the reverse proxy component. So let's move on and look at that bit. So let's look at setting up our reverse proxy rules. It's very straightforward to do, uh, but before we do it, let's just double check our environment so we know what we're looking at. We have two internal websites that we want to make available externally. They are intweb1.contoso.local, which is there, and web2.contoso.local. Okay, so if we look at those two websites, what we should see is that they're on two different IRS hosts. That one's on 1.100. And that one's on 1.101. And what we want to do is make these available externally, but listening on one single IP address. So if I have a quick look at my reverse proxy, what you'll see is I have one internal address, which is the 1.103. Uh, 
and I have one public address, which is a 10111. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen, set up some reverse proxy listeners on 443 for 10111, but for both of those websites. So if we have a quick look at the client for a second, so if I switch across to my, my Windows 7 client, which is here, at the moment, if I try and connect to one of those addresses, our external URL, which is externalweb1.contoso.com, what you'll see is I'm actually getting the web proxy homepage from the IIS server on the ARR box. There we go. Um, and if we look at the addresses for both of those sites, you'll see that they're both resolving to the same IP address, the 10111. So let's switch back to our ARR box and I'll show you how to set up those reverse proxy rules. There we go. So what we're going to do is fire up our Internet Information Services Manager. There we go. If you expand it, you'll see now you should have an option there for server farms. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new server farm. So right click on there, create server farm. And we're going to call this externalweb1.contoso.com. Okay, we want it online. So select next. Our server address, which is our, our internal address, is going to be intweb1.contoso.local. There we go. Now, if you're configuring this for something like Microsoft Link, you'll need to change the ports on the internal facing joint. So, for example, you'll see there that the HTTP port is 80 and the HTTPS port is 443. If this was for a Microsoft Link listener, you would change it to 8080 and 4443. That's where you would change those settings. Okay. So what we're going to do is click Finish. And we're going to let it create a rewrite rule for us. So say yes to that. Now if you expand that server farm, you'll see a number of options in there. So what we're going to do first is dub double check our routing rules. So pop into that option there. Okay, and we're going to turn off the enable SSL offloading. It's quite an important step that. So make sure it's turned off and apply those rules. There we go. Now the other thing that's worth watching out for, um, certainly for websites for a link, for example, is to turn off the disk caching capability. So for example, I'm going to pop into here and I'm going to turn off the option for disk caching. Okay, so we've now configured the server farm. The next step is to change the scope of the rule so it only applies to one particular uh, website. And the way we do that is we pop up to the top here, so right to our, our head uh, site administrator. And in there, you will see under the IIS component a, an option for URL rewrite. So pop into that option. You'll see a couple of rules in there. One of them is for SSL and the other one is for straight HTTP. As we're only publishing the HTTPS, I'm just going to delete the HTTP rule. Say yes to that. And then what I'm going to do is edit the uh, SSL rule. So select it, and on the right-hand side, click Edit. And what we're going to do, you can see the conditional rules here. There's the first rule, which is, yes, it is a HTTPS request. And what I'm going to do is add an option in there. So click Add. The condition input is going to be HTTP underscore host, which is there. You can select it, of course. And we're going to match a pattern, which is externalweb1.star. So it's a wildcard. And if you want, of course, you can then test that pattern. Okay. So the external website is going to be externalweb1.contoso.com. And if we test it, you should see that it passes those tests. So we'll click close, click OK and apply that rule. There we go. So now we have set up our first um, reverse proxy. So what we should be able to do now is switch to our Windows 7 client, which is here, and we should now, on the external address, get reverse proxied to our appropriate host. There we go. And as you can see now, it has changed to website 1, which is exactly uh, what is hosted on our internal system. So if we double check now and try and go to our external web 2, you'll see we're still getting the web proxy homepage. 
So depending on the requesting URL, it will route appropriately. So let, let's get the um, reverse proxy set up for external web two as well. So I'm gonna switch back to my reverse proxy. I'm gonna to pop to server farms and I'm going to create a new server farm. This one is gonna be called external web two contoso.com the internal address is in intweb2.contoso.local there we go and again under advanced settings if you wanted to change the ports that's where you would do it okay click finish it'll say something about a conflicting rule but don't worry about that just accept it and let it create the rule now again what we're going to do is pop into these servers pop into that server farm we're going to change the routing rules okay to turn off SSL offloading if you forget to do that you'll find that uh, your SSL reverse proxy doesn't work like you expect it to um, and in addition I'm going to turn off the disk caching as well there we go so that's our second one created what we need to do is pop back and look at the re rewrite rules so pop into the, the very top select URL rewrite and what you'll see is it's now created a couple of rules for our uh, web 2. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of my HTTP rule because I don't want it to reverse proxy HTTP. There we go. And then I'm going to edit the rule for the second external website. Exactly the same. I'm going to add a conditional rule which is HTTP host there. Matches the pattern external web 2 dot star. Again, if you want to test the pattern, you can. There we go, you can see that it passes. So we'll do that, add the rule, and apply. There we go. So what we should see now is when we switch to our Windows 7 client again, we should now be able to reverse proxy to that second website. There we go, if I just refresh that page, hopefully, There we go. We've now got a reverse proxy working, listening on a single IP address, but redirecting to different hosts. Um, I hope you can see that it, it is actually pretty straightforward to do. Um, it's a great, uh, great reverse proxy now that um, TMG is no more, so uh, it certainly works well enough. Anyway, I hope you found that useful.